let's begin by talking about the supplies that we need for watercolor. Now at home you probably have just regular computer paper or printer paper, don't use this. This is not what you want for watercolor. You're not gonna get that bumpy texture and it's just gonna kind of buckle and absorb right into the paper. So don't use printer paper. What you want is actual watercolor paper. You can get this at a craft store or art store or on Amazon. Um, there are lots of different levels of paper, so you can buy the most inexpensive watercolor paper or you can get crazy and buy very expensive, like handmade paper. You don't really need either one of those things. I like to kind of stick in the middle with a good quality paper that's still pretty affordable. So this little Strathmore watercolor, it's 140 pounds, so it's nice and thick. And I like cold press. So there's cold press paper, and there's hot press paper. And a hot press paper is gonna be the same weight, it's just not gonna have any texture or the kind of tooth that's on the normal watercolor. Um, the effect that usually we like is kind of, ha it has that texture to it. So hot press is gonna be smooth, cold press is gonna have that texture. I prefer cold press, but if you want it smooth, you can always go hot press. Um, with the cold press paper, it's nice and thick, so it's not really gonna buckle very much and which is kind of nice and you can get it in lots of different sizes. So this one I really like the five and a half by eight and a half. We're gonna use this size quite a bit in the class just cause it's great um, for like a little practice sheet instead of using a whole big piece of paper. But if you're doing another piece of art that you want larger, this one is nine by 12 inches. I also have a really big pad that's like more of a kind of poster size. So if you're doing an oversize piece of art, you can use um, a, a much bigger sheet of paper. So that's the cold press. And if you are concerned about your paper kind of buckling, which it will do just a little bit, it might kind of roll up at the edges, you can either use painter's tape to hold it down or you can use this watercolor block. So this one, it's a little bit more expensive. It again is cold press and 140 pounds. It just comes in a rectangular um, sheet like this and it has this kind of wax edge. I don't know if it's wax, but you know like a notebook that you would tear a piece of paper out of. That's kind of what this is sealed with. And so you do your painting straight onto here, you let it dry, and then when you're done, you use a palette knife if you're fancy. But if you don't have a palette knife, you can just use anything that's kind of sharp. I'm just using a T-pin. And you stick it up underneath your sheet of paper and break that seal and you can see, then you can pull your piece of paper off of there. So a block is great if you just wanna make sure that it's like very smooth and straight when it dries. For this class, like I said, we're gonna be using the Strathmore Cold Press. Um, it's a great affordable product and I really like the effect that it gives. Okay, so we're gonna need paper. You will need brushes. So I have a variety of brushes. If you go to the art store, again, you can spend a fortune on brushes or you can kind of go in the medium. What you don't really want are the brushes that come with like your kid's watercolor, like Crayola watercolor set. So you wanna just get something a little bit nicer than that. And I like a round brush. So you can get different sizes. This one is a 16, it's really nice and fat. It um, will spread more paint onto your paper. So if you're going with larger sizes, you can get a big brush like that. That's a 16 inch, or not inch, but a size 16. This one is a size 12, I use this one often. This one is a six. I would say this is probably the one I use most of the time just because usually when I'm painting, I'm a little bit more detailed with what I do. So that's a six, that one is a good one. And then when you're doing finer details, here's a five, here's a one, and here's a 0.5. So just depends on kind of what type of artwork you're doing. We'll talk about some of these lines and the brush strokes that you get from these. The surprising thing about even a brush that has as, as big of bristles as this, you can still get a pretty good fine point if you have a nice enough brush. So that's the benefit of having a good round brush. Okay, we also will need a paper towel. I like to, when I'm painting, I brush, like wash my brush out and wipe it on the paper towel quite a bit. It also is great for erasing mistakes, so we'll talk about that. And then you need some clean water. Some people recommend hot water, some cold water. I just kind of fill it up with 
<laughs> tap water and it does just fine. The other thing that you can do is if you are concerned about your brush not getting perfectly clean, you can use two sets of water. So one for warm colors, one for cool colors. That way the colors won't mix very much. Again, that's totally up to you. I usually just use one and I might have to go dump it out and refresh it every once in a while. So water, paper towel, brushes, paper, and then let's talk about paint. So what you probably are familiar with is like praying or Crayola, just kind of a school set of watercolors. Now this is actually totally fine. You can, you can use this. What I would recommend though, is that if you take it up one step and get the professional brand, um, or sometimes they have like a variety. So this one is like the kid washable. This one is the professional. And what's going to happen, it's still just a pan of watercolors, but the colors are going to be, the pigments will be much more saturated, which will give you a truer color and you'll be able to get them richer. And so that's going to be your difference in quality of paint. So if this is what you have at home, go for it and use it. But I would say if you are out to buy some new watercolors, I would um, recommend taking it up a step and getting this. So this one is like 10, $15 maybe. This is more like $5. And then what you also are probably, you've probably seen these before, are these are tubes of watercolor. And this is what a more professional watercolorist would use probably is like a tube of watercolor. These are gonna be much more expensive. Um, you can still get them in sets and you can kind of get them still pretty affordably. But if you um, are wanting to spend a little bit more, you can get these professional quality watercolors. So this one is Reeves. This one is Windsor Newton. I haven't played around with paint enough to really see a big difference. All I know is that with the tubes, you get even better saturation in your color than you do in the, the like pans of colors. So it's just up to you what you would like to use. Well, I'll probably switch on and off um, in the class. But with the tubes of color, what it is, is it's going to be um, like a like a soft liquid kind of. Let me show you. Here's a little palette. This is another little thing that you're gonna to wanna to have. If you're using tubes of paint, then you want to have a little palette. This is just a couple dollars. You can get this at the art store. You could honestly just use like a ceramic plate or a bowl or something. You don't necessarily need this. I like having these little separate um, dishes so that when I'm mixing colors, it is kind of helpful. You can see well, this is what mine really looks like when I am painting. So you just, with the tube of paint, you put a little bit in your pan and it's soft, it's really soft. But what I like to do is let it sit overnight and let it kind of dry out so that it is, so it's hard, kind of like what's in a pan. And as it dries out, you then just add water to it and that's what will allow you to get that beautiful watercolor. So once you use a little bit of this, you don't have to wash out your palette and be done with it for the day. Like you get to just put your green in there. You can use it as it is now. Let me show you if I put a little water on my brush, you'll see it's nice and soft. Um, what happens, it's just maybe a little bit harder to control the color because it gets so saturated because it's so wet. Um, so as it dries out, it's just a little easier to control your color. So I would recommend putting your different colors, if you're using tubes, into your palette and letting it dry overnight, like 12-ish hours. And then the next day you'll be ready to use those as they're dried out, kind of like my palette here. So those are the supplies you need. Oh wait, I have one more. This one is really beautiful. Ryan gave me, gave me this for Christmas one year. And this is just a pan um, set of watercolors. So again, you can go with the praying kind of professional, or you can even up it one more. This is the Japanese brand that I will link to as well. So these are really beautiful um, for pan colors that you can use. And let's see, one more thing. When you are doing watercolor, you don't use white. So if you want any white on your paper, typically you just leave the paper blank and paint around it. But if you do want to add some white over top once your painting is done, this product is great. It's called gouache and I have it in white. Again, it is a water soluble product. So you're gonna, you can still add some water to it to thin it down. And it acts a, very similar to watercolor. It's just much more opaque. So this one is a fun one to have in white. And then I also have it in a metallic gold because it's kind of hard to get that effect with watercolor, but the gouache makes that a little bit easier. So you need paper, 
paint, brushes, a paper towel, water, and a palette, and you are ready.